Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Uh, heading out to get my uh, little grease ball McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, I know I'm losing weight, but not all at once. Uh, but anyway, this was supposed to be the review of Iron Man 2 by Dan Slott that came out uh, last Wednesday. Uh, I bought it because I thought it'd be an easy roast plot twist. It turned out to be really good and really fun. It's not really an Iron Man book so much as it's a Stark Industries or Stark Unlimited as it's called uh, book, but it's actually good, really good. However, <laughs> this happened and uh, uh, sometimes I just do videos randomly and sometimes I do them to build upon an earlier video. So I did a video yesterday called uh, The End of Marvel Comics, I believe. And uh, I showed five people and I kind of explained why each of them was symbolic of the end of Marvel, what it was leading to. Leaders who don't lead, uh, people who are uh, offered brand new series, carte blanche. They don't even have to, uh, you know, uh, do a proposal. Like, here, you're a part of Identity Group X, here's a book. And I mean, that's happened literally dozens of times in Marvel. Uh, a, a minstrel show act, uh, Cena Grace, and then two people who can actually write good comics, but choose not to. They choose uh, politics uh, over pretty much everything. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me, then uh, someone sent me this uh, picture, and it really uh, hammered home something, because uh, I was asked a question. I said, if, uh, recently someone said, uh, if, if your theory is you grew up and comics were already diverse in the 1980s, you know, with Dwayne McDuffie and James Owsley, later known as Christopher Priest, and Anne Nascenti, and Louise Simonson, and Joe Duffy, who was a woman, uh, and uh, Larry Hama. If you say that it was diverse, then why uh, are there more hires? Uh, basically implying that they have to do more, <clears throat> you know, minority hiring now to make up for a dearth of diversity. And I said, the difference between then and now is that they hired on talent and talent tends to stick around because you want talent to stick around. I got, I got this uh, uh, guy working on a devil dog uh, uh, one shot and I'm probably hoping to get him on a, a one shot right after this ends. But I know, <laughs> like, I know like mama bird, baby bird's gonna fly away. Like he's good. I'm not gonna be able to have him for that long. Um, uh, but uh, back in the day, you'd get Anna Senti on Daredevil, and she'd be there for like five or six years. You'd put, you know, Louise Simonson on uh, New Mutants, and she'd uh, be there for years. Uh, Joe Duffy, Star Wars, for years. And now, it's all about, because those were merit hi uh, hires, so you want to keep them on forever. You just want to keep milking the cow. You want to keep making money. Um, but when, when you have diversity hires, there's no actual money. The, the reward... Uh, I saw, I was watching some, uh, like, action movie, and this guy says, your war, your reward will be in the next world, not in this one. Well, they never want to wait for the next world. They want the immediate reward. The immediate reward of Salon, or BuzzFeed, or the Mary Sue, or Bleeding Cool, or whoever saying, hashtag woke, Marvel just got its first half black, half Aleutian Eskimo trans person in a wheelchair. Yes, Queen Slay. And guess what, you freaking incels? She's riding Hulk. And you're just like, what? <laughs> What's going on? Are you... Uh, sales not, is not cool anymore? We're not trying to sell comics? It's just, we put this person that belongs to, uh, you know, 0.001% uh, of a population on a book that's supposed to be uh, mass uh, entertainment and take that. I'm not sure, what are we supposed to take? We're the customer and we're not buying. You're not getting anything. So that's why you get stuff like World of Wakanda, which was literally a purse puppy petting zoo. They're like, oh yeah, we got this person, but they're not that good, but we just hired six new black writers. Um, uh, wow, isn't that amazing? But you know, the. They kind of give themselves away, just like with all, all these minority characters and creators, and now they're putting them all on micro miniseries of three issues, because they know they can't sell four. Um, uh, they give their lack of faith, their lack of interest. Uh, as I said, uh, and <laughs> this will come out later, uh, if, they, if they care, then why are they so careless? 
you know, uh, I, I did this subject of, you know, uh, have you ever been hired because of your uh, identity before, uh, like a year ago? And I got tons of people that go, yep, yep, I absolutely know. Like everyone else had like 10 years experience. I had one and they keep putting me every time there's a, a photo. And I said, how does that make you feel? It's like, well, I know it's bullshit, but I needed a job and I just came here and I whoop it on and uh, I really don't care that it was an illegitimate reason to get hired. I was like, okay, that's legitimate. But you notice that they whoop it on and uh, the company keeps them. You know, they, with, with uh, SJW, so getting here to Kate Leth. Kate Leth is, if you're saying, oh, I haven't heard of Kate Leth, that's an acceptable answer. If you say, oh, I've heard of her, but I barely know what she does. That's an acceptable answer. So Kate Leth got in in 2012, uh, more uh, exactly in 2015, 2016, when the big, big SJW hiring push was going on. She uh, basically, one of her first jobs was for Justin Jordan. Uh, Justin Jordan, the guy who uh, will uh, uh, never work on you uh, for uh, with you again if you uh, ever follow me on Twitter or watch my videos. Uh, by the way, uh, sidebar on that... Um, Actually, I'm not going to do that sidebar. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so then she uh, did some Adventure Time stuff, and then she created this uh, series called Bravest Warriors, which, which was just like uh, Adventure Time, except for it was exactly like Adventure Time. And then, uh, as with almost all SJW hires, she was offered a job that she did not apply for. Um... Uh, this actually happened to me in college. I was chilling in my room, you know, working Mickey D's the year after uh, high school. My dad comes in. He's like, hey, you just got accepted to UT. I was like, hey, cool. I go, hey, I didn't apply to UT. He goes, yeah, I did for you. We had uh, the same name, so he just signed papers for me. Um, but uh, Kate Leth uh, got offered uh, first uh, a little mini fill-in in, a, I think it was a Secret Wars anthology. And then, like I said, with SJWs, their first comic is usually number one. Her, her first full Marvel comic was a number one, uh, uh, Patsy Walker, a.k.a. Hellcat. And it was kind of the vanguard of the I'm not trying uh, phase of Marvel, where uh, they hire women who obviously have no interest in Marvel characters. They let them do whatever, which is basically turn it into Adventure Time or Archie comics. It sells terrible. It inexplicably uh, doesn't get canceled as they hope 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 like I said in 2014 2015 you could still pretend like maybe there is this hidden audience let's keep trying for it. I mean about 2017 like after like 15 SJW uh, series had been canceled for horrifically low sales I looked it up Patsy Walker nobody ever spoke of this book and uh, it went for 17 issues which is double what most SJW comics will do um, uh, because it started at the time where they were still experimenting that there actually might be this hidden audience. Uh, uh, issue uh, 16 or 17 was below 7,000. <laughs> These are IDW numbers, and this is at Marvel. So uh, getting more to the point, uh, especially with things like, you know, Cena Grace being brought back on Iceman in the Sean and McGuire. Like, like I said, it's like the sixth or seventh novelist, uh, you know, female novelist they've hired out of nowhere with no comics experience to put her on a number one. It, it always ends the same. They don't understand the medium. They don't understand the fandom. They don't care about the character. They just make the character whatever they want. Literally, you can tell they get halfway through the Wikipedia of this character and they get bored. So they just turn her into generic uh, Supergirl hero person. But uh, Kate Leth, uh, in these series of tweets right here, basically gives away the secret of SJWs, that they're not there to sell books, that they absolutely have no interest in entertaining you. In fact, it's problematic that you even ask for that. The point of them hiring is that you didn't hire someone else because that someone else you didn't hire was probably privileged. I mean, formerly privileged. The new privilege is to have the side of your head shaved and be a 300 pound lesbian. Uh, the old privilege was uh, to be a white guy with talent <laughs> who, who had sales. By the way, I always uh, joke about privilege not being real, but it is real. It's just not, it's not all pervasive. Like I, so I travel a lot and I have noticed this. This is consistent. I get a lot of Walmarts because I'm cheap. Um, and uh, if you're in a, 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 a heavily minority town, 
they won't just have the greeters, they'll have the checkers. You know, you know, if you're in a, in a, a upper class or upper middle class neighborhood, you just buy and you leave. Um, but the poorer the neighborhood, the stronger the checker is. Like they're gonna check your bags and they're gonna check your receipt. And I travel all over the country. I go to majority black towns. I go to majority Hispanic towns. And this always, always happens. I will go there and everyone else is rustling through their bag to get the receipt. And I start doing it and I'll be like third or fourth back. And then in this majority black town, the black checker who's checking to see if people actually bought their stuff will like point at me and like wave like, no, you don't have to do this. And I'm like, it's awkward because it's like, okay, there's you're black and everyone here is black and there's three black people in front of me and I'm the fourth one back and you're telling me I don't have to get my bag checked. Like that's weird. I think they, I think maybe they watch too much undercover boss and they're like, nah, mom, you ain't slick. I know you're the CEO. <laughs> but I mean, I'm down here in the majority Hispanic town. They won't, they won't, they refuse to look at my receipt. Um, uh, I, but, and the same thing, I'll be way back in line and they'll wave me through. Um, but, uh, so the point is to take the spot, to you know, have it be public that that spot has been taken. And it's literally at that, you know, uh, Ha 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 ha! I got it. You don't. So you see from these uh, tweets that uh, uh, Kate Leth is telling some obvious lies, <laughs> but there's a point behind them. Men are problematic. Men are rude. Men are harassing. Even if you're talking about a child, a 12-year-old, saying they pirated your thing, uh, it's it's cool to brag about laughing in a child's face. Uh, it's, uh, there's a second story where a guy says something about her using a blue pencil and then she very proudly says she screamed, I work at Marvel. The whole point of them is not to make a good product, sell comics, entertain you. The point is that they got hired and the point is that you didn't. Uh, it's a, it's basically a placement victory. It's king of the hill. Um, I work at Marvel. You don't, ha 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 ha. Like I said, I said this many times about Jawbreakers. I started it because I was, you know, hitting a certain age. I go, oh, you know, I never really ended up working at Marvel. I, I didn't really make a big push a little bit in my 20s, but then I saw how crazy the industry is. I go, but the problem is the Marvel I want to work at doesn't exist anymore. Like, Marvel is embarrassing. <laughs> that was one of the saddest things about doing the, uh, reading that Iron Man uh book is uh, Dan Slott has a little secret. He still cares. <laughs> like, you're not supposed to care in Marvel. You're just supposed to brag about how someone from 0.0001% of the population just got on the new uh, X-Men book. That's what it's about. It's not about sales, and it's certainly not about entertaining you. So anyway, I'm going to go have my uh, sausage egg McMuffin. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks, everyone. Give to the Super Chat, the Patreon, and the Indigo Goes. You're funding original content. And I will have uh, uh, more new comic reviews up later today. Next one will be that Tony Stark 2. Probably do that one at lunchtime. Thanks for watching. Bye.